interview that Charlie Sheen did with ABC correspondent Amanda Canning, and where he passionately defends his lifestyle of drug use and partying, but it all started with a radio show rant last Thursday that prompted CBS to cancel the rest of the season of his hit sitcom, and we just want to share a little bit of the clip, and then you'll meet the man he was talking to. Take a look. I'm Levine, yeah, that's Chuck's real name, uh, mistook this rock star for his own selfish exit strategy, bro. Check it, Alex. I embarrassed him in front of his children and the world by healing at a pace that, that his unevolved mind cannot process. Okay, last I checked, Heim, uh, I've spent, I think, close to the last decade, I don't know, effortlessly and magically converting your, your tin cans into pure gold. Well, joining now is the radio show host and close friend of Charlie Sheen, the man he was talking to, Alex Jones. Welcome. Thanks for having me. If, if I could just say one thing, I've known Charlie for about six and a half years. He's never drunk alcohol, used drugs in front of me. He's been completely clean for almost a decade until about seven months ago. Now he's come off the drugs and the alcohol, which is almost like you know being off your meds. It has the same effect, so he's supercharged. He's angry. He's focused. Uh, and I know that when they interviewed him at his house, because I talked to him, they interviewed him for about two hours. And that's a little kind of joke uh, that's uh, out of context. He's tired of being judged and uh, him being held up as the ultimate demon in this world. He didn't kill a million people in Iraq. Uh, he wasn't involved with the takedown of Building 7 here in New York. And he thinks there's bigger devils out there uh, than himself. And Chuck Lorre's put out a whole bunch of these cue cards while having management tell him a month ago, if you speak out against four episodes being cut, we're going to fire you. Then he, then he starts putting out all of these... Uh, Chuck uh, yes, uh, Chuck Lorre. He starts putting out... Uh, he starts putting out vanity cards, not just on uh, Two and a Half Men, but on other shows saying Charlie Sheen is dead inside and soulless. You didn't show the worst one there. And so Charlie's told, we're tying your hands. Now we're going to beat you up for whatever so, contract. Let me, let, me, let me ask you. So the, the, big, the question that I have is, who's, so you're saying Chuck Lorre started this? With the vanity card. With the vanity card. And up front had management, according to Charlie. And I've been there when he's on the phone with his management, or his manager comes over. You talk they, too fast for me, baby. Slow down. Well, I know we don't have a lot of time. I'm right, getting on record. Right, right, right. They told him, they, before he said a word, they said, we're doing this, and if you criticize it, you're going to be fired. And he said, why are you telling me this? You know, I'm going through a hard time right now. But he didn't understand it then. I think they're trying to make him quit or something, so have to pay out his contract or the $100 million in syndication. I think there's some shenanigans going on here but and then they start the putting these going. things out then they start putting these vanity cards out uh, for trying to prod him and push him people put vanity cards are. i don't think people know okay most talking. most shows have a logo at the end you know like a little dog or the mgm lion uh, chuck lorry uh, has these uh, big write-ups at the end of his show and imagine at the end of the show with charlie sheen and other cbs shows this is on air, this is on air saying this man is soulless this man is dead inside uh, i you, mean let me ask you this do you think it's from that clip that we saw a lot of people would ascertain, okay, or assume that Charlie was on drugs again. You say he wasn't. Do you think he's he, taking blood tests? Do you think he's? I've been at his house when they come right. in, take the blood, I take, take the urine. That. I take your I was there that. two weeks ago. Do you? I, I hear you. Do you think he's manic depressive? I mean, as a friend, do you say, okay, this is something else? You guys are missing the boat. It's not the drugs. He's actually suffering from manic, de manic no. depressive disorder. Let's just remember, you, you know, Charlie's been a star. Like Charlie's been a star for 30 years, and all people know about is these episodes where he explodes. The Charlie Sheen I know is a compassionate guy who's I'm really smart. Left episodes where he explodes. You don't I mean, think he, he was saying, uh, you know, this is the best thing that happened to the people who are with me. They're never going to regret I it. They had the magic. best time. You know, this is on drugs, tearing up rooms and hotels. What about that explosion? I know this. I don't use illegal drugs, but when I quit smoking, I've had a long battle with that. I feel horrible for a week, and about a week later, my wife says, please, just go back to smoking sometimes because I get so manic. And I think we have a similar physiology. A lot of people have that physiology. He was, he was not giving it up at that point he was on the drugs and booze oh, oh you're talking about the last few months you think there's yeah. something underlying here that people are missing as a friend I just think that he's somebody going through a hard time who got clean, and that's why I went out to California to help him. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's wrong so for them to be prodding now. him, yes, and demonizing him and trying to make him blow up. That's actually what I believe is going on here. They should all just shake hands, bury the hatchet, come together for the crew of two and a half men. I want and uh, try to support Charlie, but also Chuck Lorre, everybody else. But but what understand what happened. Thank okay. You. Oh. Okay. So you're worried about him. But, but Charlie's tired of being held up like the devil. We've got the TSA putting their hand down people's pants. Infowars.com covers it all. We've got the banks bankrupting the U.S. Wait, wait, wait. wait. We're sticking with, let's stick with Charlie because that's way too much. No, no, Charlie is mad. I understand. Because he's held up I understand. That. He didn't steal 
three point seven trillion. Okay. Like but the Federal we're Reserve. just here to, to figure out what is happening with Charlie. That's what we're trying to and, figure out. And he has he's doing interviews now, so he has a chance to speak for himself. And but he they're taken out of context. Yes, we're not, they we're are not there. You don't Gaddafi. know. He seen oh, they've been comparing him to Gaddafi. Look, I, I, I'm just saying I don't think I've heard. Compare George anybody. Bush, a million dollar Iraqi, to Gaddafi. Gaddafi. Excuse me. I think we were here to talk about Charlie Sheen. I'm not trying to cut you off. Charlie says you have a right to we kill him, but not to judge him. Yes, Colonel Kurt said. Thank you. You are I'm certainly a wonderful friend. And yep, boy. Yeah. Thank you. Charlie, stay clean. We love you. And everybody else out there, stay clean. Don't use drugs. Infowars.com. That's a good message. Okay. <laughs> Infowars.com. Infowars.com. Okay, that is Alex Jones using the media tool for what it's there for to interject real issues. There's over 30 million viewers on The View. Uh, you've seen a lot of really influential people uh, go on there, even though they just cover celebrity news. Uh, you've got all these people trapped in that false world of celebrity news. Um, you know, petty issues of uh, who's dating who and who went where. And Alex directly took it on and tried to interject, bring people back to the real issues, torture, secret arrest. Uh, he mentioned that over a million dead Iraqis. He mentioned that Building 7 was collapsed. Uh, he mentioned how TSA is sticking their hands down people's pants. He's mentioned how over $23.7 trillion have been looted and stolen uh, through this whole derivative scam. Uh, he, and he mentioned how Charlie is being uh, compared with Gaddafi. And here we have petty celebrity issues. And, you know, we don't know what's going on with Charlie Sheen, but we wish him well. It's his personal life. Uh, and then we have real issues going on in the world, uh, Gaddafi and the rest of it. And somehow Charlie uh, is supposed to be of equal weight, uh, but that's just the cycle of celebrity news. That's the way it goes. Uh, but I thought Alex did an amazing job of really trying to bring people back around to what's really important in this world, uh, albeit on a celebrity show that covers these kind of topics day in and day out. Uh, but you have seen The View cover other uh, substantial topics and Rosie O'Donnell really put herself on the line and used that platform to cover a lot of 9-11 uh, truth issues. And now Alex, live on the show, is using it uh, to cover 9-11 and other issues, really. And, they, you know, they didn't want to talk about the Bush issues, how... how um, controversial it is that Bush just blatantly lied about WMDs, invaded Iraq without a real pretext, why we're still in Afghanistan after uh, almost a decade, why Obama, who supposedly is supposed to be ending these wars, is just expanding them. And, you know, now we see everything going on in northern uh, Africa. It's just an expansion of the Mideast tension that's been going on. And so how refreshing for a bunch of housewives to see Questions they may not even be familiar with. What is he talking about? A million dead Iraqis. They never reported that on the mainstream news. Certainly, Building 7 has been little reported except in the alternative news. Uh, it's very interesting. Last week, we just saw Man Cow's, uh, or heard about Man Cow's interview with Donald Rumsfeld. Said he had never heard about Building 7. Um, certainly a blatant lie, but at least he's being asked these questions. Uh, just before that, he had been asked at the CPAC conference, what happened to those missing $2.3 trillion the Pentagon admitted it couldn't account for? Uh, Rumsfeld just lied again and said, well, it was always there. Um, the point is we see these questions still being raised after after the Bush administration has faded away as they're trying to rebrand themselves.